Well, good morning. My name is Felipe Herrera. I work in Develop, and I'm in charge of a smart devices generator for BlackBerry. This has two parts. First, I will be talking about the main use of our generator, and in the second part, I'll be talking about the main uh, news about RIM, Research in Motion, which is a company that manufactures BlackBerry. So I'll be talking about the news in terms of BlackBerry. So let's start talking about generating. Besides from talking about the features, I would like to point out something that happened to us. We are convinced that in the generator we've gone to a different stage. Up to, we had been developing a number of features and suddenly a couple of things happened which made us change our approach. So we went to a sort of different phase. From that different phase onwards, I will be mentioning two concepts, maturity and evolution, not just in terms of the generator, but also in terms of the applications that we generated. These are words, concepts, that just by themselves, they are not very eloquent, so I will talk about what happened to us, what made us have that click. And what, that was nothing very extraordinary or mysterious. It was just about projects. In the BlackBerry world, many projects started to come up in the community, but not just a higher number of projects, but also we started to have more interesting, um, larger projects with a higher number of objects. So far we have had classic applications with three transactions, three listings, three details, and suddenly we started having larger, more interesting projects with a higher number of objects, with more complex navigation types. And here, I decided to use three names here. For example, one of the projects that we had was a Telco project for a telecommunications company. The other one is for the PhD bank. Another project that we had was for the bank called Banco Caja Social. But besides from the names, what I want you to observe are the types of applications we are generating. And we are talking about banking applications, for example. So not just the applications that started to come up, not only were they larger in terms of objects, but actually we started to generate applications with, um, that were domain sensitive, that is to say, a banking application has sensitive data, so certain things cannot happen. So, many of you might be thinking, well, okay, but how is this related to the generator? And actually, what this is hiding in these applications, in these projects, are not applications per se, but what, what, what lies behind, which is QNA, the Quality Assurance Department. All of these companies had very strong QA departments that were completely external to us, to our tech, to Genexus. They knew nothing about development. Most of them had teams that were specialized in banking only. And these people started to uh, require us more. They became more demanding. They wanted to have better response times, um, better flow. They even made us see a number of details or things I thought were details, things that were in the generator, error messages, default options that were natural to us because we they were always there for us, 
but uh, they started inquiring what's a logout function doing there, please take it out from here. So they started to ask for changes. And from these projects on, we sort of had a click and we started to work on stabilizing and improving what we had. Up to the point that from the requirements of these Q&A demands, I can make sure that applications are more stable, faster, and can be depurated easily. So there was a sort of dialogue with the Q&A department. Also, projects were concluded, and thanks to the improvements that we made, all of these applications passed the different quality tests. So as I said, behind each of these four bullets here, we had dialogue instances with the Q&A department, and from then on there was some sort of restructuring to make our applications faster, we changed the process of storing metadata. So when loading, applications became lighter and didn't uh, use up so, so, many, so much memory, so they became faster. In order to improve stability, we changed the uh, server in terms of how it connected, and we also improved the uh, secondary work. In order to facilitate um, purging, what we did was to change the structure so that with two objectives, uh, the end user does not see the logs, and at the same time, the user could obtain a status as to what is going on with his application. And finally, to make our applications more customizable, because this is something that we were requested, people wanted this button in certain, certain colors, or over here, or over there, so we worked more in the area of supporting GeneXus themes, and we also worked a lot in terms of extensibility, the so-called user controls and external objects. We already had them, but we improved them. So I just want to talk about themes and support. This is not something new. This already existed. But what we actually did for the last versions is that we almost completed all the properties, all the controls, 100%. All of our controls are now customizable. And here I brought some examples I chose randomly. For example, you can uh, modify the application bar, the grid, the image. In the previous event, these things, uh, you couldn't do these things with a generator. So, in order to improve customization, we worked on theme support, but we also improved the way in which user controls are built. And here, rather than talking about native controls that are inside the generator, there were new controls, not just new controls, but we improved the ones we had. I would like to use some external controls as an example. These do not come with the generator. They were done for specific projects. Uh, uh, certain things were required for certain projects, so we did some specific controls. And these are some examples that I brought in which we're, we were involved in the development. But I also have other examples of third-party controls, but I ended up eliminating them. Here we have a control for capturing signatures. You just entered the data of the user. And then the user could, through the finger or the stylus, to send his signature, and then this the signature generated a, uh, an invoice in the server, and then it was sent to the customer. On the right, you have a control for showing data on a map. And this control was already included in the generator. We already had this. But the main new thing about this, if that is, was done through Google Maps. 
Behind this control, there's a small story, and I will tell you about it. BlackBerry has its own map, black platform, has own BlackBerry maps, and all those maps are geolocated. It has a native BlackBerry maps application, a navigation application that's based on BlackBerry maps with geo positioning and searches, and everything is done on top of BlackBerry maps. For that reason, in the generator, there's a control which is called BlackBerry maps. A minor detail that you might not know about is that BlackBerry maps are not available all over the world. If you take your BlackBerry, which works well here, and if you go to Colombia or Paraguay, and you open up the map application, and nothing happens. It just goes blank, there are no streets, no names, nothing. Obviously, we have clients in those countries. We have one in Colombia. The other banking project was actually meant for Colombia. And some clients came to us and they started asking whether we could offer an alternative since in those countries there were no map controls. So we had to offer an alternative. And this is how this came up. This control, I brought this but not because it might be interesting or new, but because as a developer, and here I'm no longer a present the speaker, but the developer, which suits me better, but this was quite a complex thing to develop. BlackBerry has BlackBerry maps and supports that, and all of its APIs with maps and geolocation are based on BlackBerry maps, which means that there are no APIs for other things. There are no app APIs for Google Maps or any other map set, um, engines. And Google doesn't have APIs for BlackBerry, so if you go to Google, it offers an API for web development, another API for iPhone, another one for Android, and then the rest of the platform doesn't have anything else. So we ended up developing this based on uh, downloading images and based on translating absolute positions, latitude and longitude to relative pixel positions. This is quite a complicated control type. Even though I was involved in this development, this is an example of one control that's outside the uh, generator. We improved the uh, extension forms, we improved themes, user controls, we also improved the way in which external objects are built, and we also built new external objects. Some of the ones Fernando showed are already included, but here I just brought some of them that I thought were more important. The API for geolocation, for example, so as to detect in what position the device is, an API for storing data in session so that if you put the application off and when you open it again, when you resume, the data are still there, a library for manipulating the loading process, the progress bar, and then two APIs, which are the photo library and the camera that allow us to work with images to download images from the gallery or to store images in the gallery and to interact with the native features of the phone. In terms of external objects here, something quite different happened. In the past controls, well, we have added new controls, but there are many controls that have been developed by third parties or developed by us for specific projects. In the case of external objects, pretty much the opposite happened. Native ones created a lot. They increased a lot. But there are a few examples of objects that were uh, custom made. I brought one that was made for the telco, which is a dynamic translation table 
that worked uh, by translating based on a database. So, uh, besides from showing you controls and what we're doing, I wanted to tell you that we reached a state in which our applications are more mature, have more features, and are more stable. And if there is something that cannot be done with a generator, we created methods for extending that. And I also brought three examples of extensions outside the generator. So, I will tell you about what's next. The feature list is huge. It was too much to put here, but what I did bring were some features. And I brought them especially because I know that they will be coming out very soon, which are versions, and sending notices through BlackBerry push services, which we will be having very soon. As I told you, there are many features to develop, so there's a lot of work. So the question is, that's what happened on our side, but what will happen in terms of BlackBerry with the RIM platform? As I told you last year, the main news were that the BlackBerry phone line was released with its new OS system, which is BlackBerry OS 7. And on the other hand, they launched their tablet to compete in the tablet market, which is the BlackBerry Playbook with a specific OS system that's called Tablet OS. In terms of these two lines of products, BlackBerry um, didn't do so well and the main news about these products is that they just released upgrades. 7.1 version for cell phones was released with some minor features, for example, improvements in battery performance, radio, FM to share internet over the Wi-Fi and things like that, sort of functional things. In terms of playbook, there was no hardware release, there wasn't a new playbook or playbook 2, but what we had was an upgrade of the OS that was updated to the 2.0 version and it is quite improved in terms of the user interface. So these two uh, product lines that were not very active this year, let me, let's see what happened. And here I took the same chart Fernando had used without some competitors and I compared RIM sales against Android. I don't really understand too much about marketing and market share, etc. Um, I am much more oriented towards uh, development, but what I will do is to try to uh, talk about a couple of things that I have been reading lately, which I think are very interesting, at least to share with you. The trend is quite clear. Fernando already mentioned this in the past year. Blackberry sales have decreased. But there are a couple of strange things. For example, one of them is that the uh, latest uh, two projections made by analysts have been, they have been wrong. And they have been quite mistaken because BlackBerry sales are better than analysts predict. And this is a very simple explanation which is called emerging markets. BlackBerry is doing very well in emerging markets. That is to say, outside the U.S. and Europe, basically, Latin America, Africa, Asia, for example, most articles mention Indonesia, South Africa, and India, and India. That's a good market. Also, everybody agrees that even though expectations are being exceeded, actually, that excess is not as good as to reverse the growth trend. Something quite strange, that, according to this chart, is that 
Carlos. The activation rate of service. The people who activate services continues to grow. It's never stopped uh, growing. People who fire BlackBerry services are still increasing. So another strange thing to tell you from the corporate market, this is not the true BlackBerry chart. BlackBerry has always concentrated on a market niche, which is a corporate market. And in that market, it's always been a leader. But beyond this, which we all know, what I found strange is something I read, because the analysts say that even though BlackBerry is a leader, this trend is also applicable to this market. But the strange thing is not that. No one really says who's winning, who is emerging as a winner from that market. No one really knows, no one really agrees as to which will be the next BlackBerry. There is no uh, telephone that will be oriented to the business or corporate market. If you see Android advertising or iOS advertising, they're not oriented to that type of market. So what, do, what I mean by this is that with this line of product, the growth rate is decreasing. However, BlackBerry is still there. It is still a player. It still has good sales. It's ranking third in the global uh, area, which is not its strongest point. So it's still competing. But you look at that and you say, OK, it continues to compete. But the chart is going down. So what's going on there? You told me in the previous slide that BlackBerry is not doing anything new. So what does this mean, that it uh, just lost? No, precisely the opposite. No, BlackBerry didn't stop fighting. They're just leaving aside this platform to give way to its new platform, which is BlackBerry 10. BlackBerry 10 is, is putting all of its effort, all of its labor into this new platform. We even had the chance of participating in a meeting where a BlackBerry evangelist was there, technological evangelist, that, that's the way they're called. They are people who go visiting companies, clients, and developers, and they sort of advertise their technologies. And this evangelist told us that from the managerial staff, that's a message they're receiving, BlackBerry 10, BlackBerry 10. And while I'm at it, this gentleman also told us that the fact that emerging markets are saving BlackBerry is not something that's a coincidence. BlackBerry had already identified this, and they're really emphasizing on other markets outside the US, for example, Latin America. So. Beyond presenting this, I would like to talk about the OS itself and what BlackBerry 10 is. It is a completely different OS system. It is not the next version of 7. It's a completely new system. Even though it is not new, it was not coded from scratch. What RIM did was to buy uh, an OS core that already existed, which is QNX, which is used for high endurance system, industrial systems, for example, or automobile systems. And it's actually considered one of the leaders in that market. And what RIM did on this core was to build a layer on top <coughs> of graphic new a graphic interface in order to build this OS. New OS, 
What are we talking about? We are talking about a new generation of applications. Something that I would like to mention is that, please, this is not a BlackBerry 10 phone. This is called BlackBerry Dev Alpha. It was only released for developers. BlackBerry 10 have not been released yet. The actual release date would be near the uh, next quarter next year. It is a, some sort of ugly box with the interesting thing that has a new OS. But the idea of this phone is that it will be a phone only for developers. The only way of getting one is by participating on the BlackBerry Jams, which is a development event that BlackBerry holds. And the idea of this, these phones is to facilitate development and testing and to encourage developers to generate applications and to upload them to the market with a clear aim that once the final version of BlackBerry 10 is released, there's a much richer market in terms of applications. So this has a new OS with a new generation of applications. So. They had to rebuild all their applications, their business platform. Blackberries had to be rebuilt so that they were compatible with these generation of smart devices. And something that's very interesting for me was that all these new applications that are being built are being built around a new concept, which is the uh, flow interface concept. These are some sort of new pattern for navigation design. This is a new user experience. I think that's a correct expression. It's totally new, which is trying to create a new phase for RIM applications. So I already mentioned the OS, new patterns for development. So how do we start working here? How do we generate an application for this platform? There are several options from a development point of view, each of them with its own fla flavor. For those who work in the web, uh, you have WebWorks for working for HTML5 and JavaScript. For those of you who need high-performance applications, for example, games, you have a framework, you have an SDK for working with C++, and there we release some sort of uh, framework that's called Cascades that has a framework that allows us to easily generate user rich user controls that are totally renovated. They not only changed the pattern, but they also completely updated the control library. Another option for development, for those of you who, who work with Flash, you have Adobe Air. And finally, you have the option of using the app player of Android. One important thing here is that the platform does not run Android applications. It, this is not about downloading the PK and just plugging it in. It doesn't do that in a native way. So what you need to do is that those APKs have to be compiled. They have to be changed so that they become compatible with this platform. And then they are sort of up uploaded. It's a, some sort of virtual machine. They do not run natively, but they run on a virtual machine. There's a new platform, new applications, and BlackBerry with this wants to resume and to continue playing. So the question is, when will you have BlackBerry 10 in GenXus? Well, the answer is we still have time. We will not be making that decision right now. We still have time. Why? Because BlackBerry 10 will only be released next year. So we will see them in the market by the end, more or less, of next year. And once they are in the market, um, 
We do not expect BlackBerry 7 to disappear. BlackBerry 10 will be a process and will require time, so the BlackBerry 7 platform still has a long way to go. So from a developer and generator point of view, we're fully convinced that this is the future, but actually in the present, in the short or medium term, BlackBerry 7 is what counts. So we will continue to try to improve all the features that we mentioned for BlackBerry 7. And when the time comes, we will have to open up the BlackBerry Gen 10 generator. So, what I mean is, whether we call it BlackBerry 7, 10, or the number you want, BlackBerry has always been, is still there, and will continue to be there, and is one of the main competitors. So I invite you to hop on to the BlackBerry platform, and that you develop applications in the smart device generator for BlackBerry. Thank you very much.